Welcome to the Neumann Home Studio Academy. In this tutorial series, we're going to show you how to record drums. Now, as I'm sure you already know, recording drums is a fairly demanding task. You see, a drum kit is not just one sound source, like a guitar, for instance. No, it's an, an, an entire combination of all kinds of instruments. And of course, we want to record the whole drum set with all its cymbals and toms and whatnot. But don't you worry, because there is a rather simple way to record drums with only three microphones. One of the most popular drum miking techniques was developed by Glyn Johns, sound engineer for the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, the Who, and many other legendary artists. In the late 60s, when drums were commonly recorded in mono, Glyn Johns happened to have left an additional microphone near the drum set. Out of this happy accident, he developed a stereo miking technique that has remained popular to this day. Exactly. And the Glyn Johns technique, as it is commonly referred to, is both simple and elegant. In its original form, it only uses three microphones. The first one is set up about four feet, one meter and 20 centimeters, above the snare drum, right here. The second microphone is on the other side of the drum kit, right above the floor tom, angled toward the center of the snare drum. And the third microphone is right here, right in front of the kick drum. Although the placement looks a bit odd, it produces a well-balanced sound image of the entire drum kit. However, exact placement is crucial. The upper microphones must be equidistant from the snare drum so the snare appears in the stereo center. Yeah, and you don't need a tape measure for this. You can simply use a microphone cable. Okay, there you go. Just hold one end against the overhead microphone, like that. Yeah, and then straighten the cable toward the center of the snare drum. And then check whether the other microphone is at the same distance. That looks pretty good, right? The overhead and floor tom microphones should be high-quality large diaphragm microphones set to the cardioid pattern so they pick up sound from the front and reject sound from the rear of the microphone. And for correct imaging, make sure both microphones are of the same type. Now, Glyn Johns' original choice was the Neumann U67. The Neumann U67 was the studio workhorse microphone of the 1960s. The U67 features an exceptionally flat frequency response and an unusually low noise floor for a tube microphone. In fact, the U67 has remained so popular over the years that Neumann recently decided to resume production. And that's what we're using today. Neumann's current U67 reissue. The kick drum microphone could be of a different type. But being a true workhorse, the U67 works very well in this application too. With the pad switch engaged, the U67 can handle high sound pressure levels without unwanted distortion. So, we placed a U67 about one foot away from the kick drum. It's about 30 centimeters. And at this position, this microphone is at the same distance from the snare drum as the other two microphones. That ensures a tight phase relationship. So let's listen to the three of them together and please note how tight the snare drum sounds, even though we didn't use a dedicated snare drum microphone. What do you think? 
Sounds great, doesn't it? Well, I'm afraid that not everybody will be able to afford three U67 microphones to record drums with, because the U67, after all, is one of the most expensive microphones in Neumann's catalog. But let's see what it does if we replace it with this one. The TLM-102 is Neumann's most affordable large diaphragm microphone. It features a cardioid pattern and ultra-low noise. Despite its small size, it features a genuine Neumann one-inch condenser capsule. And thanks to its silky sound and high dynamic range, it can be used for anything from vocals to acoustic and electric guitar and drums. A high dynamic range means that the TLM-102 handles extreme sound pressure levels without unwanted distortion. Up to 144 dB, that's a lot more than a kick drum. And it doesn't even need a pad switch. So, let's bring in three TLM-102s and let's try to set them as close as possible to the already existing U67 setup. And then let's plug them in. There we go. Okay. You guys are ready? Right. Let's listen to what that does. That sounds good too, doesn't it? If you listen closely, you'll notice that the TLM-102 setup brings in a slightly more modern sound. It's a bit brighter, and if you listen with good headphones, you'll notice that there's a bit more bass in the sub-frequencies. Where the U67 setup is a bit tighter in the low end, and it brings a beautiful vintage vibe thanks to its tube electronics. Let's compare. Thank <laughs> you. 